glad to have you back. If you just joined us, this is News Report Review on High Impact Television. Right now, we have our guest in person of Kenneth Ikewa, a lecturer at the University of Lagos, joining us via phone call to talk about the ASU strike. Good morning, Mr. Kenneth. Thank you for joining us on the review. Good morning. Right. So very quickly now, let's delve into the conversation of the ASU strike. We can see that the strike has been prolonged by 12 weeks. And this is something that um, started on the 14th of February. And now three months have been added to it again. Now, I'd like to ask, the, the, the ASU now as a body have listed so many demands that the federal government is yet to implement, you know, and that seems to be causing a lot of back and forth in that sector. Now, if the federal government, you know, implements all of these demands that ASU has laid down, first off, would it lead to the complete um, demise of the escalating corruption that we see in Nigerian public universities? Okay, Mr. Kenneth. Now, uh, let's still continue with, in this line of thought, there's, there's this question about uh, the ministries, departments, and agencies that were supposed to meet that somehow discuss this issue about agreement with us. So we can talk about the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Labor, Employment, and Productivity, and uh, the National Universities Commission. And there's been this back and forth between uh, the Minister of uh, Labor or the Minister of uh, State for Education, Dr. Emekan uh, Wajuba, that uh, the Ministry of Education is not the direct employers of ASU. It looks like a lot of stakeholders are trying to push uh, some responsibilities off the way. So could you please clear the air? Like, who is the direct employee of ASU, of uh, the lecturers? And if they have 
the you know the if they are the major they play the major role in discussing with the federal government in meeting the demands that ASU has put forth. <laughs> Thank you very much. That question uh, humors me, as I'm sure it, it humors a lot of stakeholders that are involved. Okay. So the post, the pushes and the push between the stakeholders of who should actually. Mr. You know, Kenneth, could you please speak up a little? We will find it very difficult to hear you. Okay, I said that question actually you must be. Okay. Must be. And the pulls and push this back and forth between the different stakeholders um, is, 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 it exposes a comedy of flaws and uh, a comedy of unreality. All right. Um, the real or what my and on what the employers, or what the real employer of ASU actually is, is very simple. The Nigerian people, the Nigerian people are the employers of ASU. Mm -hmm. The Nigerian people, the Nigerian society employs ASU. And so the Nigerian institutions employ ASU because the products of ASU benefit the Nigerian society the products of ASU beneficiate the Nigerian society, beneficiate the people. But of the Nigerian Nigeria. people are not an organization. There, is, there should be an organization that represents the, who are who is representing the Nigerian people in this sense. Is it the Nigerian Universities Commission or the uh, Nigerian Labour, the Ministry of Labour, or the Ministry of Education? There is a collection of different institutions different ministries, different government departments that interact to ensure that education, all right, is properly administered, is properly managed in this country. But the purpose of collective benefit of the Nigerian society. So we cannot pin it down to one singular institution or to one singular individual or to one singular ministry. Okay. That is why I am more macro in my approach and more philosophical my approach to that question. Okay. The Nigerian people employ that jewels that jewels that that drive you know that benefit and beneficiate the Nigerian society. Okay. I think that is a better position going okay. forward. Okay. All right. So, so you've uh, you've talked about how, um, in your own understanding and approach, the Nigerian people employ us. Now, still on this issue, yeah. ASU is a body that has been calling for um, university or university autonomy. Now, what does ASU really mean when the union keeps pushing and proposing for university autonomy? Please help us shed more light on that. The concept of university autonomy is multidimensional. And one hour on this program will not be enough, mm. you know, to expose what that actually is. Okay. But to a great extent, what we are saying is that universities should be allowed to a very great extent to function independently of government influence. Independently of, you know, political influence, you know, from the government. Okay, so can you you just talked about government influence uh, and uh, the need for the universities to you know work independently and different dimensions to to that effect. Now, when you talk about government influence, in what way are the government influence you know um, maybe like truncating or obstructing the autonomous operation of the university? Oh, okay. 
Okay. So I wouldn't want to comment on that. Okay, let's move. If that's the case, uh, the, Mr. Kenneth. Now, let's look at the issue. There's this issue about IPPIS, mm -hmm. Integrated Payroll Personnel Information System, which is a payment platform that the government has presented on its part. And ASU refused. And they brought the University Transparency Accountability System, UTAS. There's been this back and forth. In fact, this is one of the major reasons why uh, there's been this protest. What exactly is the problem with both payment platforms? Why is ASU you know, running away from, I, for, um, from IPPIS? Not running away. Okay. Uh, from my knowledge and in my own view, from IPPS, which is otherwise known as IPPS. Okay. And I think you have given an answer to that question already, so you have helped me answer that question. It comes back and boils down to the issue of autonomy. It comes back and boils down to the issue of financial control and financial management. All right? Okay. Um, there are different types of remuneration of compensation that you have in the university system. And if the university system doesn't have an independent or collective uh, um, um, system that guarantees that rewards and compensations and benefits are managed centrally, Amongst the public universities, it will create a problem, you know, for members of staff. And so what ASU and other other unions on campus are saying is that look, we are we we are an intellectual sector, and we also have the privilege of developing this kind of you know uh, systems or software that will do the same thing that the government system uh, and structure is also bent on achieving. And it has been proven to be efficient, at least 90, 99 percent efficient. So why don't you migrate us onto these platforms and ensure that all rewards, all benefits, all compensations are properly captured? So ASU is only acting for a migration to a system structure that properly captures rewards, benefits, and compensations that are peculiar Right. Let, let me let me come in here now. I was watching about two weeks ago. I was watching an interview on television. Um, the Minister of Labor and Employ Labor Employment and Productivity, in person of Chris Ingigi, was responding to the ongoing strike, and he made a comment. He said, "Asu is a body." under the federal government and an employee cannot dictate to the employer how they should be paid their salaries meaning ASU should not be the ones to tell the federal government the payment platform that should be issued out you know in which they will be paid their salaries how do you react to this in regards to all of this i agree completely with him and ASU The government that pays the salaries of members of ASU. I agree with him completely. We, can, we are not dictating. <laughs> but ASU can negotiate mm. for the government, with the government, on how best, how efficient, how, how more efficiently, how more effectively the rewards, the, compens the salaries, the wages of members of ASU, of members of and even more academic staff of universities can best be paid, can best be remunerated, can best be disbursed. No. So we should stop. No one is dictating to anybody. We are saying, look, let us negotiate, let us be dialectical about it, and let us also be dialogical about it. We have, as I believe, have engaged government in a dialogue, and I believe government has refused to engage. In a civilized dialogue. So, so it's not a question of dictating. We can dictate, of course, we can dictate. But it boils down to the issue of autonomy. Okay. It's a question of negotiating. Okay. Of course, every law under the sun from the International Labor Organization allows it to dictate its employer. 
Uh, right, right. Very quickly now, you know, you talked about it being a matter of negotiation. Now, we've seen that this com this issue of negotiation seems to be hitting a brick wall as one, one is not um, bending for the other. And if this is an issue that will persist and it comes to a point where this is the only issue where ASU is still standing their ground and they're saying they're not going to call off their strike, what would be done in regards to this if the negotiation keeps hitting a brick wall? Would the students just keep staying at home because of that? Or would what, what could be the alternative out of this? You cannot feel the heat of a fire if you are not in it. Mm or if your relative is not born in, in that fire. I repeat, you cannot feel the heat of a fire if you're not in it, if you're not around it, or if your relative is not born or born in, in that fire. It is a question of priorities of those that are supposed to be negotiating with those who lay the golden egg in the Nigerian society. I don't want to be too radical. Okay. I respect what my very, very senior eminent colleagues are doing, working on negotiating with us and working on this struggle. But I also want to bring to the and bring to the fore and question those in government, those who are supposed to be sympathetic or empathizing with us, empathizing with the situation in Nigeria. 90% of them were educated in Nigeria in the 70s and the 60s. 90% of those of whom benefited from free education benefited from the best of education in Nigeria when university education was top in the world from Nigeria. How many of them have their work? How many of them have their children? How many of them can boast that their children currently are students in Nigerian universities? Students in Nigerian universities, how many can actually say their children are students in Nigerian public universities? Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Okay. Okay. Mr. Kenneth is uh, a lecturer from University of Lagos, mm -hmm. popularly called Unilag. Before, okay. before, before we, we let Mr. Kenneth go, we would really love to have this conversation with you some other time, you know, to talk more about it. But because of our time, very quickly, in 30 seconds now, if all of these demands that ASU is putting on the table is met by the federal government, do we see the possibility of an absolute end to industrial action in Nigerian public universities? This struggle should not be seen just about Nigerian public universities. Mm. This struggle is a struggle to revitalize the Nigerian public educational sector and system. Mm. Okay. So we are not fighting. We are not advocating for Nigerian public universities alone. We are saying pay attention to the Nigerian educational system, revive it, give at least a minimum of twenty percent. Of the annual budget of Nigeria okay. devoted to education mm. at all levels. And you will see, you know, <laughs> you will see in leaps and bounds the, the, the correlation even on the character of the Nigerian people, okay. on the health of the Nigerian people. Okay. So it is a battle, it is a struggle for reviving education in Nigeria, the Nigerian educational system. Right. And that's my take on that. Thank you so much, Kenneth Ikewa, a lecturer in the University of Lagos, for joining us on the review this morning. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.